Well, in the future, the music from that Revolution-era march and ball might be captured on a system that could revolutionize the recording industry. Harold Dow has that story. When man first started reproducing sound back in the late 1800s, this is what we heard. Today, stereo systems have improved, and the sound of music people are listening to couldn't be better, right? Wrong. Just when music lovers thought they had assembled the best audio systems money could buy, along comes a new technological development. It's called the compact disc, or CD. Unlike the conventional vinyl long-playing record, the compact disc is a little under four and three-quarter inches across. Only one side is used, but can store more than an hour's worth of music. The sounds are digitally recorded and the compact disc players use a laser beam instead of the record needle for playback. The result? Absolutely no sound distortion. I think now, for the first time, the listener has the ability to listen to uh, a musical performance uh, in, uh, in their home and virtually listen to a blueprint of what the engineers and the musicians heard at the time of recording. Philips, Magnavox, and Sony spent $400 million developing the compact disc. They were then joined by more than 30 other equipment manufacturers and have now totally standardized both the CD player and the disc worldwide. Different companies had different systems that were incompatible, such as with the video disc. It's the first time record companies have banded together to promote a new product. Recording experts feel the compact disc and player is a technological breakthrough that will allow people to hear music at home like they have never heard it before. But if you'll remember, several years ago they said the same thing about quadraphonic sound, a four-speaker system. It was a costly debacle that is now just a memory. Any disc will play on any machine, whether it's a Sony, a Hitachi, a Sharp, a Sanyo machine. But cost is a problem. It takes space-age technology airtight and dust-free laboratories to make the compact disc. They sell for around $20 each. The player itself can cost from $450 to well over $1,000. Well, the profile of the customer that we have at this point in time is uh, uh, a male, uh, over 35 years old, over average income, over average interest in music. Industry officials say in 1983 they sold over 50,000 compact disc players and well over a million compact discs. And they say if sales continue to rise, eventually the cost of both will come down. But it will take more than that to convince some record buyers that CDs will replace LPs. Harold Dow, CBS News. Maria, the world of recorded music has been in a spin for the last five years thanks to the super high fidelity sound of the compact disc. It's known as a CD. Now, CD sales have more than doubled every year. At the same time, sales of the vinyl LPs that we all know about have been falling off about, uh, about 18% or so last year. But amid the sweet sound of success for compact discs, there are some sour notes, as Rob Armstrong reports. This may be the hottest thing in recorded music since 78s gave way to LPs. Millions of people are buying compact disc players. The music quality is, is just fantastic. It's just like you're there. Once you've owned a lot of these, it's hard to go back to buying the albums. In 1982, Sony revolutionized music with a compact disc player. But while the industry was prepared for the soaring popularity of the machines, it was not prepared for the supply and demand crisis that went along. I'm constantly frustrated as far as finding titles go. It's very, very difficult to find what you like. If there were more titles available, I probably would have bought at least another 30 or 40 in the past year. And that's saying something at about $13 a disc compared with about $8 for an album. Consumer frustration is being echoed by retailers who say producers have put them in a very uncomfortable position. We may get in uh, 10, 20 pieces. We may have ordered 100. As fast as a key product comes in, that's how fast it sells out. The first compact disc players sold for $1,000 or more. Now they're available for a little over $100, and that's broadened the market. But making the machines is easier than making the discs they play. They're produced in semi-sterile facilities under exacting conditions. And while
while a dozen new plants are in various stages of planning, there's only one operating so far in the United States, 13 worldwide. Making a factory to produce compact discs is technically very difficult. It requires a great deal of sophisticated equipment and takes close to a year to a year and a half of planning. The artist Stevie Wonder. Recording artists say their music sounds better on compact discs, and consumers who have made the switch say they're reluctant to go back to the old vinyl LPs that have been the industry mainstay for two decades. But production limitations have forced record executives to make hard dollars and cents decisions. Most record companies have to make a choice as to what they're going to put on compact discs, their newer products or their catalogs. And most of the record companies are optioning to go along with hit product. That still leaves some buyers out in the cold, and they may be there for a while. With the amount of CD players being sold, uh, people are, are scrambling to get anything they can right now on CD. Uh, the observers that, that I credit still think that there will be a shortage of sorts for at least another two years. So, until compact disc production catches up with demand, more frustrating times are ahead for consumers, for retailers, and for record companies. Rob Armstrong, CBS News, New York. Of course, in a couple of years, they'll have uh, quite, a, quite a load of them after they start putting them into the store. Or they'll have something totally different. <laughs> That's true. Something new. Coming up.